The AirPods 3, Sony WF-1000X Mark IV, the Galaxy Buds 2. These are some of the most popular true wireless earbuds on the market. But how do they fare against small ears? Okay, hear me out. I know this is a pretty niche subsection of earbud review, but I feel like my small ear brethren and sisterin have a very, very specific considerations when purchasing earbuds. With smaller ears, it feels like most buds build up pressure and discomfort with extended use. And that's if they even fit at all. I mean, look at them. You can barely see them. Well, insecurities aside, I will be taking these top buds for a spin and seeing if they're worth the consideration of the small ear kind. All these buds have been thoroughly put through their paces by our expert team of product reviewers. So if you want the full rundown, head to the link in the description to find out more. Also, slap a like on the video if you want to see more earbuds get the small ear treatment. Okay, so this video is going to focus on the three F's, fit, fatigue, functionality. How well do these buds fit into your ears? How long before ear fatigue starts to kick in and how functional are they to control? For fit, I tried out the earbuds with every available tip to see which provided the best fit and noise isolation. Well, all except the AirPods as they do not come with any removable ear tips. And kind of unsurprisingly, I went for the smallest tips. We kick off with our very first ultra scientific test, the headbanger test. Next up, the wear them upside down to see if they will fall out of your ear test. And finally, the seal test. I'll be listening to music next to my TV while turning up the volume and seeing at what point sound begins to leak into my music. From all these highly sophisticated tests, I felt that the AirPods were the least secure. Even though they didn't fall out, they just weren't as snug as the other two given their open nature. The Buds 2 came in second, they were very snug in the ear and offered very good seal. Sony's were the best fit when it came to snugness and tight seal. A lot less noise bled through and it was a step up from the AirPods 3 and the Buds 2. So my official fit ranking would be the Sony's, the Galaxy Buds 2, and then the AirPods bringing up the rear. Next up, fatigue. And I'll be testing out how comfortable these buds are simply by spending the entire day with them and seeing how long before I can't wear them anymore. In a reversal of fortune, the WF-1000X Mark IV that won the fit round came dead last year. What started as a really relaxing listen gradually became a rather uncomfortable one. And I believe it's the tip tech that Sony opted for. Sony uses foam tips and as such, it really does feel like your ears has to mold to them rather than the other way around, like you would with most generic silicone tips. And just a disclaimer, I own a pair of Sony WF-1000X Mark IVs and I eventually replaced the foam tips with silicone tips and found that I could use them for a lot longer. It did have a slight impact on sound isolation, but was a worthy trade-off for a better, more comfortable fit. The Buds 2 came in second. These are really comfortable and I felt no discomfort after wearing them for over three hours, but at the top of the pile are the AirPods 3. You could wear these all day if you wanted to because they are less intrusive than the other Buds. You can really feel the absence of pressure buildup. 
I wore these from a full charge down to 10%. So a, a good five hours and they felt as comfortable as when I first wore them. So my fatigue ranking would go AirPods 3, Galaxy Buds 2, and then the Sony Mark IVs. Finally, functionality. This is pretty straightforward. It basically measures how well the buds can be controlled without using a phone. Now this one's a little bit tricky because depending on what phone you have will probably dictate the experience you will have with these buds. For example, if you're on Android and use the AirPods, you don't get access to a lot of features such as spatial audio, always on Siri, but you are at least able to skip and repeat tracks with the touch controls. On iOS, it's a lot more straightforward, although I found squeezing the stems to interact with the buds was the most fiddly out of the three. With the buds too, the features get far more sparse if you're using an iOS device. You aren't able to do much more than pause and play and enable transparency mode and noise cancellation. However, on Android, you get a lot more control and overall the touch controls are pretty intuitive. I found that you don't have to put too much pressure when you're tapping on the buds, which is great because then you're not really like pushing the bud deep into your ear canal. I find it's like probably the right amount of sensitivity. But the Sonys do seem to be the most OS agnostic out of the bunch. All these features are available on both Android and iOS through the Sony app, save for a few codecs that are primarily Android based. The controls are once again very intuitive and like the Buds 2, they have touch based controls that work very well. That means in terms of ranking for functionality, it would go the Sony's followed by the AirPods and then the Galaxy Buds 2 bringing up the rear. All in all, these buds have their pros and cons in relation to small ears. If you don't mind ambient sound leaking into your music, then the AirPods 3 are probably your best bet. They are the most comfortable to wear for long periods of time and they have good sound quality, even if the control input is not the greatest, in my opinion. The WF-1000X Mark IVs are good for small ear folks that listen to music in short bursts. If you have a commute that's about 30 minutes to an hour, these are perfect with spectacular noise isolation, sound quality, and touch controls that are very intuitive to use. The Galaxy Buds 2 are kind of the all-rounder of the group, offering great sound isolation while being able to wear them for extended listening sessions. The only place they lose points is their controls when regarding to iOS devices. Not being able to skip or repeat tracks is a little bit of a drag, but otherwise a good set of buds for small ears. Well, there you have it. All three buds safely negotiated the small ear challenge. But are there any other buds you think could benefit from the small ear treatment? Sound off in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.